Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. I actually wanted to release this video a few days ago, but I was feeling very sick, could barely even talk, and I know it's not COVID because I got tested, so I guess I, guess I just caught the flu or something, but anyway, here is the video. We are going to talk about port forwarding in PFSense, and before I start this video, I'm going to say something that I always say when it comes to port forwarding. Port forwarding is a thing, that's right, you can configure it, it will work, if firewalls support it, but should you do it? Definitely not. Especially when it comes to uh, just gaining access to internal resources on your network from the outside, definitely do not use port forwarding if you can use a VPN. In fact, I did a video about uh, a few weeks ago about port forwarding in Unify, but the first few minutes of this video were uh, generalistic about port forwarding, what are the risks and what are the alternatives. I'm going to put a link to this video in the top right corner, definitely give it a watch, at least the first few minutes, whatever applies there applies everywhere in every firewall when it comes to port forwarding. So if you must use port forwarding, definitely, uh, 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 definitely reconsider, but here is how you do port forwarding in PFSense, but definitely keep watching towards the end of the video. I'm going to show you how you can limit the sources coming in to this port forwarding rule. We are going to utilize something called in PFSense aliases. Definitely keep watching. So, in order to create a port forwarding rule in PFSense, we are going to go over to the firewall tab and go to net. In PFSense, it's called netting. Here it is, uh, 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 the port forwarding, we are going to click on add. We are going to choose the WAN interface, IPv4 protocol is TCP. Now I'm going to do something that you must never do outside the demonstration environment like this one. We are going to port forward uh, 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 the RDP port. Definitely do not do it in production, you will be hacked in, a, in, in at least uh, in a week. Don't do it. I, I'm going to do it because it's for demonstration and I know that this rule will be deleted the second I finish recording this video. All right, so the destination port for RDP, this is the port number. And now we must choose that when a connection is coming in from the outside to our WAN address, requesting port 3389 in this case, to which workstation or to which host in our network we, we need the a, a PFSense firewall to a, 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 a forward this a request to. In our case, it will be this host. And we can also change the target port so we can, for example, a, 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 a make it a little bit less obvious. For example, I can forward port forward uh, 11111 into the uh, 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 port forward rule but I'm going to keep it simple for this demonstration purposes description let's give it a generalistic description like this and in reality this is all we need remember in pfSense until you click apply the, the rule will not take place actually all right guys so this is the port forwarding rule now the minute that we, that we clicked apply, the port forwarding rule is live. We can of course test it. I'm going, for example, to disable the rule. All right, so I'm going to try to, uh, to connect from my phone, which is not on Wi-Fi, it's on uh, mobile data. I'm going to create a rule, uh, sorry, a, a connection to my a public IP address. I'm not going even uh, to bother with dynamic DNS because once this video is complete, this PFSense firewall is going back to storage. All right, so I have uh, 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 the remote desktop application, the official one from Microsoft, and I'm going to try to create a new connection. I'm going to specify my public IP address because I'm coming in from the outside. And I'm going to click on save, that's all I need. Now, right now, the port forwarding rule doesn't work. So if I try to connect, nothing will happen. I won't be able to. So now let's go over and enable the port forwarding rule so that we can definitely identify that this is the one 
this is the mechanism that allowed this connection to now take place. Let's go back to our phone and let's try to relaunch uh, the connection. Now, if this, uh, if this is in, indeed working, now I'm going to be prompted for a username and password, which I'm not going to bother even uh, typing in. The, the, the very fact that I got uh, this prompt means that the port forwarding rule works. Let's try it. Indeed, we are now getting a connection to our remote host because the port forwarding rule forwarded the, uh, the port to the workstation that we uh, told it to. Now, as I told you, we can limit the sources coming into this firewall rule. You can see that right now, if we edit the rule, the source is any, anyone. It's open for me and it's open for anyone else. We can limit in case it's relevant for you. If you know the IP address you're coming in from, for example, your uh, work uh, uh, might have a static public IP address that you can use. We will start off by going into firewall and going into aliases and let's create a new alias and let's call it work IP and let's, uh, for example, say that 1.2.3.4 is my work address, so you can't have spaces. Let's say that this is my work IP address and now I can use this aliases, alias that I created when I go back to firewall net, I'll edit the port forwarding rule and I'll expand sources and instead of any, I'll say single host or alias and let's start typing in work and now I'll get to choose work IP, click on save, click apply. And now if I try to connect from anywhere in the world that is not my work IP, I'll get, I'll, I'll not be able to. If I take back my phone and relaunch the remote desktop connection, I'm not getting through, not getting through because the port forwarding rule is now limited in its sources. And if you must do port forwarding and you know the addresses you're coming in from, this will definitely be a good idea to utilize an alias. So guys, this was port forwarding in PFSense. I hope this was informative. If you like this video, definitely give it, uh, give it a like. It will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.